Welcome, everyone. I want to thank you on behalf of the family, um, I Hope Church, for being here to celebrate the life of uh, Melanie Malish. Um, just by way of reminder, the family asked me to continue to respect wearing masks. As you're seated, uh, feel free to take them off then, but especially at the end as you greet family, we, we do ask that you continue to wear those just for safety. And uh, um, thank you so much uh, for coming to support and celebrate Melanie. Uh, to the family, uh, to Christine and Michelle and David Christopher and, and Stanley, um, I'm so sorry for your loss, and uh, we wrap around you, and we are praying for you, and we're so thankful for you, and uh, my prayer for this afternoon is that the Holy Spirit would kind of step into this moment, and he would step into the room, but more so he would step into our hearts and step into our minds and bring the peace that only he can bring. The uh, Bible says that God is well acquainted with grief, and uh, that he promised to actually never leave us nor forsake us, and he calls his Holy Spirit, the spirit that kind of walks among us, the comforter. And, and I ask that he would do uh, what he only can do in moments like this. Uh, the picture that I get often in, in situations like this is, uh, I don't know if you've ever had that experience of being in a very crowded place and you have your very young child in your hand. And uh, all of a sudden you lose sight of your kid and you've lost him in the crowd and, and you can't find your, your, your child. And uh, the panic and the fear that grips you in that moment. And I remember just a memory in, in my own life turning around and seeing my dad and seeing that my son's hand was safe in the hand of my father. And the overwhelming calm and peace that came over me to find that my child was safe. And uh, in this moment, in a way, that's what's happened. It feels like we've lost. But I want to remind you that, that Melanie is safe in the hands of the father. And she's in a real place that's amazing, that's, that's more alive and filled with life than, than we even realize right now. And uh, this, this story in the Bible, even Jesus, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, lost him when he was 12 years old. They had taken this trip, and uh, they had gone a day away before they realized that Jesus, young Jesus at 12 years old, was not in the crowd. And can you imagine the mom guilt of losing the Son of God? <laughs> it was probably pretty intense. They turned around, and after three days, they found Jesus, and uh, he was in the house of God. And he said, didn't you know that I would be in my father's house? And uh, it's a beautiful prophetic picture that, that one day, I know there will be a separation, but as we give our life to Jesus Christ, we are reunited with all of those that we feel are lost to find out that they are found, and that they are found in Jesus Christ. Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 4.17, that the little troubles we suffer now for a short time are, are making us ready for the great things God is going to give us forever. We do not look at the things that can be seen. We look at the things that cannot be seen. These things that can be seen will come to an end, but the things that we cannot, cannot be seen will last forever. We cannot physically see God with our, with our physical eyes, but we see him through faith and we know heaven is real because there's this burden and this knowing inside of us that there's something more than this. And 
I know for a fact that Melanie is alive because of her faith in Jesus Christ and she's in heaven and heaven is a beautiful place filled with creation and she was a fan of the outdoors and I know right now she's probably floating on crystal rivers calling it her liquid satin and enjoying the presence of family that have all gone beyond and before her and for, for that with trust we can take even joy in this moment. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ. That, Father, you sent your son to die on the cross for us, to, to pay the penalty of our sin for moments just like this. So that in moments just like this, hope is not lost, love is not lost, and, and a family members aren't lost, but they're safe in your hands. So, Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and do what only you can do. That, Father, you would hover over the chaos of all of the anxiety and fear and questions and that you would bring peace. And Father, you would fill every heart, that you would fill every mind. And God, that you would walk with us through the necessary grief. And Father, we bless you and we thank you. We honor you in this room. In Jesus' name, amen. Death uh, really doesn't exist in the classic way I think that many of us may think about it. Um, 
You know, we will never really cease to exist. It's just the choice that we make with faith that determines where we exist. And uh, I'm, I'm so thankful to hear about Melanie's life and her, her rich faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, that it's that faith that promises her a, a restoration of what God intended for every person to be reunited with him in heaven for eternity. And so she lives on continually. And I think in a way, too, there's, there's another way that, that other people live on. And, and it's in the memories that we hold in dear and treasure in our heart of them and and I want to encourage you to, to continually share great memories about Melanie's life with each other, even, even beyond this day, that uh, she would continue to live on in her legacy, her thoughts, and those great moments of, of laughter uh, would continue to be passed on from generation to generation. And so we want to set a, aside a time uh, during this celebration of her life to talk about her memories, to talk about some of those amazing things that she stood for. So at this time, I want to invite Amina to the stage to share some stories and some memories uh, about Melanie. Hi, family. My family loved my grandmother very much. She was the sweetest. She had so much love to give. I hope she knew the great effect she had on people. My grandma was the best. Not for her cookies, grilled cheese, or hugs, but because she wanted a God-loving family. She was very successful. She believed in the Lord who guided her. When I found out I was going to see her not breathing on a bed, instead of seeing her smiling face, I was scared. This is the first time I have lost someone this close. I didn't want to mess anything up. When my family and I went to go to the funeral home, where my grandmother lie, the question that continued to run through my mind was, why can't she wake up, wake up from this nightmare? If I could make a summary of her life, I could, but there is no such thing. You can't look at someone's life, write some facts and good memories and call it good. It's not that simple. She was the grandma who would get me a new Bible every time I seemed to lose mine. She was the grandma who never gave up on her family. My grandmother was a great daughter from all of the great stories I heard from her childhood. A smart student, a beautiful and supportive wife. She was a loving, understanding mother and grandmother, the best. Thank you everyone for coming to say goodbye to my grandmother and joining me in thanking the Lord for her. God bless. Crystal Phelps. Okay, Amina took her shoes off, so I took mine off. Um, it was my highest honor to have been able to work with Melanie Malish and Stan, um, my friends in the Hope Store, um, the bedrock and the foundation of the store on Sundays. Um, she was truly a friend. She was truly a grandma and a mom. And she was, she created family wherever she went. And the one thing that, um, that I love so much about, about Melanie is her graciousness. She was gracious in every situation. Um, there were times that I would get all stirred up and go, hey, Crystal, it's going to be okay. 
And so as long as Melanie was around, as long as Stan was around, we, we were okay. We were, and, and I'm sure that you've all felt that same feeling uh, over your lifetimes. It's going to be okay. And I look at her Bible and I see the rainbow of colors that she used as she was, because um, I knew she knew her scripture. And, and, um, and even the grandchildren know that their grandma was in the scriptures. And that's so important. And it like she kind of encourages them to stay in their scriptures. What a great grandma that was. And she still is. And so her graciousness was wonderful. Um, the one thing that we shared was our love of Christopher and Banks sweaters. <laughs> you know, we loved our sweaters. In fact, every once in a while we'd swap off. You know, and it's like, oh, that work, that that matches that outfit. And so we were just having so much fun together. And you guys are all f the the cook, and all of the stuff that you guys got to uh, enjoy with with Melanie and with your mom, with your grandma. And, um, and just the family fun that she created and the graciousness that she shared with everyone. Um, except for the one guy, her first Sunday working in the Hope Store, and she was helping somebody find a book, and this guy came in the store and took two books off an end cap and walked out with them. She came up to me, she goes, what do I do? I said, well, what do you want to do? <laughs> she said, I want to go get him. I said, do you think that's what Jesus would do? No, but you know what? Those books were on healing, and I'm pretty sure that that guy can't get that healing by stealing books about it. <laughs> that was the only time I really felt her not gracious side to her. <laughs> But she was just as much of a mom and a sister to me as she was to so many of you. And it was a total honor to be able to share life with Melanie. Thanks for letting me share. We did want to open up this time. If, if there's somebody in the room who just sparked a memory and they would love to share it just as a way to, to laugh together, to remember together, and, and just continue her legacy, I would like to invite you uh, even to the stage in this moment just to share brief memories uh, with the family. We would love for you to do that. I'll pause for a moment just to let you think about it. Well, as many of you know, I am one of her favorite grandchildren. <laughs> but um, the one thing that always stood out about my grandma is her incredible faith and her incredible trust that she had in me even when I messed up. And that over, <laughs> that is why I always believed in Jesus because if she had the same faith in me, it, Jesus can have the same faith in me as well. And her legacy really, to this day, proves that over and over again to me. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, we do have a, a short slide show we'd like to show uh, to the family. Go ahead, guys. i 
says to us in Isaiah 43, and he's called us by name. When we go through the deep waters in great trouble, he will be with us. And when we go through the rivers of difficulty, we will not drown. When we walk through the fire of oppression, we will not be burned up, and the flames will not consume us. For he is our Lord, our God, the Holy One of Israel our Savior. Oh, yes, yes. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are King. Yes, you are. Oh, yes. And I will be still and know Father, 
Romans 15, 13 says, uh, Now may God, the fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his superabundance until you radiate with hope. And speaking with the family, getting to know more and more of who Melanie was and who Melanie is, it was those words, radiate with hope, that seemed to capture her best. That she was someone of amazing hope. She had as if this unendless fountain of hope that lived in her. And it gave way to this undying optimism, this unbreakable hope. And this, this source that was in her, I think is probably a large reason why she was so involved in, in prayer ministry. She knew that not only was this hope physical and, and who she was, but it was also supernatural in power and could change situations through the power of prayer. She was involved as a prayer warrior here at this ministry with the Cleansing Stream Ministries years ago, and she was a main intercessor at Psalms 91 Church where they would receive calls and, and get requests and meet weekly to ask and petition and intercede for people and for their needs. I understand she was always the center and the connection point or the catalyst person to call any time a family member was sick or in need. She was the source to go to. And if she found out about it, there was going to be prayer. And there was going to be people praying consistently for whatever that need was. She loved her family and she had such a powerful way of never giving up and never letting go of hope. Melanie was an enduring fountain of hope inside. And uh, I think maybe this is just my speculation on why she had so many beds in every part of her room. Is she always, always wanted to be there for somebody who needed hope or may, needed a place to stay. And, and I understand that her history is filled with times that she would open her home and, and be a place for people as they went through hard times. I was reminded of this quote that says, Hope is the foundation for every restoration story. And I think Melanie was God's hand of that restoration in so many people's life. And I think it's a beautiful picture of who Christ was and, and how he expressed himself through Melanie. I'm reminded of the story in, in John 4 where Jesus comes in contact with a woman from uh, Samaria. And they meet at this well and the disciples have gone into the city to, to get food and Jesus sits down weary from a journey and strikes up a conversation with the Samaritan woman. And Jesus asks her, would you, would you get a drink for me from the well? And the Samaritan woman was, was actually kind of put off because in that culture it was not normal for a Jew to speak to a Samaritan. And, and she's like, how is it that you, a Jew, speak to me, a Samaritan? And Jesus essentially reveals that... Uh, if she really knew who it was that was standing before her, she would ask him for living waters and that she would never, ever be thirsty again. And I, I thought about, you know, those living waters. Obviously, Jesus would say things that were not literal in nature, but spiritual and deep. And that living water was something that was so powerful and potent in Melanie's life, as I've heard the stories. But that living water is is the substance of what faith is, the substance of what hope is, that knowing no matter what the circumstance looks like with our physical eyes, we know that there are things that are unseen that are working on our behalf. And that hope is what guided her life, that, that faith, that living water inside of her. 
is what quenched her soul and has ushered her into the gates of heaven in this moment. Jesus is the answer to that thirst that we all feel in our hearts. There's these questions that I think all of us wrestle with. Of why are we here? You know, there's must, there must be more than this. And Jesus essentially came to answer that question as the son of God and to declare that there is a heaven and that he was the answer for everybody to res- be restored to the Father. And I know if, if I could speak with Melanie, I know Melanie would, would ask me, make sure that you ask everybody in the room to make sure that they're right with God and that they've had that moment to be restored to the Father. And so this afternoon, I, to honor Jesus and to honor Melanie, I, I want to make that invitation to you that maybe you're in this room and you've never stepped onto that foundation of faith, as Jesus calls it, and realize that that's the ground that really will never shake. Even in this moment, those that are resting their faith on Jesus Christ and have encountered who he is are unshaken, is what the scripture says. Though we grieve and we mourn the loss, we know we have hope that endures through this moment. And if you would, I'd, I want to invite you to bow your heads and, and pray with me. If you're in this, in this room and you don't know where you stand with God, I want to let you know that Jesus is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. That sin and disobedience and rebellion had separated man from God, but that was never God's intention. We were always supposed to be close to him and with him and representing who he is in the earth. Paul says this in Romans, that if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you confess with your mouth that he died on the cross for your sins, and that he rose from the dead, that you would be saved. And so if that's you, I want to lead you in a short prayer. Maybe just say this in your heart or even out loud, right where you see. The Holy Spirit's in the room. God hears your prayer, and he'll forgive you of all your sin, and you'll be made right with God in his eyes. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. I believe you rose from the dead on the third day and that you are my way back to be reunited with the Father. In this moment, I give you my life. I give you my faith. And I give you my trust. Knowing that death has no hold on me anymore. In Jesus' name, amen. Melanie walked such a great witness of what it looked like to walk with God, and she loved her family so dearly. She loved her children so dearly, and I imagine that's the love or that extra something that was in every breakfast that she made for the grandkids, that was filled with the love. I imagine what, that's what made camping so great with her is because it was always such a celebration of family and life. Melanie truly was a witness of this fountain of life. I also understand that she uh, had a habit of always giving away Bibles. And uh, she had several Bibles herself. And as I, even as I look at her Bible that's on the stand this afternoon, I was reminded, I think it was Charles Spurgeon that said, uh, a Bible that's wearing out is evidence of a life that is not. And she was somebody who studied the scriptures and went through the scriptures diligently to find out who she was in God and, and the promises of God and what was guaranteed for her through Jesus Christ and what he had done on the cross. And so to honor Melanie, if, if you do not have a Bible in Melanie style, we have a Bible for you at the end of the service. And so when you walk out these doors, we want to invite you to grab one and uh, that's yours to keep. It would be our joy that you would take those. Melanie is now in a place where it's uncorrupted by sin. I think she was always drawn to heaven or drawn to the outdoors and and creation because there's so much that we can learn about God by what he has made. And uh, even this earth was subject to sin, but she's now in a place that have mountains and rivers and, and trees and 
but it's all uncorrupted by sin. And that's where she resides. And for those of you that have prayed that prayer of faith this afternoon, that's one day the, the reunion that we'll have with Melanie and all those that have gone before us. As we approach this last song and our benediction, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much again for your promise. I thank you so much, Lord God, for the peace that only comes from you. I thank you so much for Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. Though he had never sinned, he was willing in his love to trade his righteous life for our sinful life. And that divine trade has now given us access to eternal life in you. And God, today, I, like your scripture says, that you're well acquainted with grief and as we mourn the loss, the temporary separation that all of us are experiencing, Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd just put your hand on every heart and every mind, that you would help us walk through the process of grief, that you would remind us where she is and, and who you are, and I thank you for the peace that comes from that. In Jesus' name. Together, the family is asked, would we stand together and worship? In majesty. Ship.
worship his majesty Jesus who died and now glorified King of all kings in Jesus who Psalms 116 says the Lord the Lord's loved ones are precious to him and it grieves him when they die but oh Lord I am your servant yes I am your servant and you have freed me from my bonds I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call on the name of the Lord I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of his people and in the house of the Lord. Melanie is, is free from the bonds of this temporal life and this tent that one day we'll lay aside so that our spirit will be made new and live on forever. And she is safe in the house of God. And in this temporary separation, I, I pray that the Holy Spirit will keep you and fill you with peace, guide you and guard you. And I pray that the same fountain of hope that filled Melanie's life is the same fountain of hope that's offered to you to this day. And that from that fountain, you too can spread the love and the joy that she did everywhere she went. I wanna thank you again so much for coming to celebrate Melanie's life. And I encourage you to uh, greet the family as I escort them out into the main hallway. They'll be there. And Please pray with them, bless them, and continue to wrap around them as they navigate through this season. Again, thank you so much uh, for coming this afternoon. After we escort the family.